Hello, my name is Ariel Turner and I will be explaining the health belief model. So some history for the health belief model. It was developed in the 1950s by a group from the US Public Health Service. It's one of the first theories of health behavior that's it's believed to be one of the first theories of health behavior ever introduced. And it lets us understand the thought behind people's decisions regarding their health. It's exactly what it says. It's people's belief in their health. And this model is based almost entirely on self-motivation, mainly self-efficacy. So the premise behind the health belief model is that people will take action to screen for or control a health condition if they think that they are susceptible to the health condition, if they believe that there are serious consequences, if they believe a course of action can reduce the severity or seriousness, and then they have to believe that the benefits of the action outweighs the cost. So there are six main constructs in the health belief model. And in order for someone to fully go through the health belief model, this person needs to feel that taking action and changing the negative health behavior, um, it needs to follow these six constructs. The first is perceived susceptibility. So this person needs to think, what is the likelihood that I will have this issue? Then perceived severity. How serious do they think the health issue is and how can it affect them? Perceived benefits. How well does the recommended behavior reduce the risk associated with the health issue? So what are the benefits in changing this negative behavior? Perceived barriers. What are the negative consequences associated with doing the recommended behavior? So what kind of roadblocks and other things are preventing this person from engaging in the positive health behavior? And then cues to action. So these are factors that makes that person want to change. And then, like I talked about earlier, self-efficacy. So this is one's belief that they can do the required behavior to produce the desired outcome. So I'm going to apply these six constructs to a, um, in theory, HIV prevention program. The target of this, pro this program is going to be female African American teens between the ages of 13 and 18. The uh, health risk behavior is HIV and then the uh, risky behavior is unprotected sex. So the first construct perceived susceptibility. So what is the likelihood that people who engage in unprotected sex will um, then contract HIV? So you would relate this health condition to the individual. So in the case of my program, I would have a young woman who looks like my target audience with HIV tell her story and you know how she had put herself at risk and then ended up getting HIV. So it'll put things in perspective to the participants. Then perceived severity. So how serious do you think this health issue is? So an example, you would inform the individuals of what the condition can do to them. So for my made-up program, I would have a visual representation of how deadly the HIV virus can be if it does turn into AIDS. And then I would have pictures of how it affects the body or a PowerPoint slideshow, brochures, etc. Then the perceived benefits. How well does the recommended behavior reduce the risk associated with the health issue? So this is an individual assessment that there is a benefit to changing or adapting one's health behavior. So for example, in my made up program, if the risky behavior is unprotected sex, then I would show my target audience how to properly use condoms and then explain the benefits of receiving regular HIV screenings. Okay, what are the perceived barriers? What are the negative consequences associated with doing the recommended behavior? 
So this would include an individual assessment of the barriers to the action of change. So in order to overcome these barriers, I would inform participants of free health clinics and then provide contraceptives such as condoms and such. Cues to action, factors that make you want to change. So this is an individual assessment of actions needed to facilitate change and external influence promoting change in behavior. So my example would be I would discuss with participants how they can change their at-risk behavior, namely using protection during sex, and then hold them accountable for their actions. Lastly, self-efficacy, one's belief that they can do the required behavior to have the, the to produce the desired outcome. So this is a individual assessment of their ability to engage in the behavior and change it. So my example would be is I would encourage participants to use condoms on a regular basis and demonstrate how to properly use a condom. So there are a couple of strengths and weaknesses associated with the health belief model. Some strengths, it's easy to understand, it's very simple to implement, and it focuses on modifiable perceptions. However, some weaknesses, it only focuses on the individual, not the person and their families or environment. It's just that one person. And then it oversimplifies health behavior. And these are my references. Thanks for listening.